Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Today, I get tetanus. You are looking at my latest Toyota purchase for $500. This is a 1989 Toyota 4x4. It has the 3.0 V6. It's got 158,000 miles. Looks to be a little bit of a custom work done there. Is that an EGR delete? And it's currently not getting fuel or not going to start, but it does have a manual transmission. And this is strictly a parts truck. It's not going to be a long-term project of any sort, and you'll see why once I show you the underside and how rusty it is. But we are going to take this 3.0 V6 coupled with the manual transmission and the transfer case and that's going to be our drivetrain for our Gambler 500 project car aka the Weirdmobile. Now all the old time subscribers remember that. That is our 1988 Honda Accord which has been turned into an El Camino and it sort of just rusted away. So we took the rusty patched frame from my 88 and we're now putting that beneath the Weirdmobile. So we're going to be adding four wheel drive as well as a fully boxed frame. So we're basically combining Toyota and Honda, the two manufacturers most known for rust in this region. But now this is going to supply our power plant so we can move on with getting the body mounted on the frame and figure out how that's going to work out. So stay tuned, that's a long-term project. But today, we're taking a look at this truck. Now, it was $500. Uh, you can see it's already missing the front clip. The grill is in the bed, but the guy sold the hood and the fenders. But everything else is here, the truck's complete. Uh, the tailgate's also missing. But you can see, it's got the typical Ohio rot. It's been sitting outside along a tree line for a while. There was a, a garden of some sort growing in the bed. Yeah, look at that. Nice and crusty. This was solid. I accidentally uh, touched it and it, uh, yeah, well, there you go. That happened. There. So, this bed's about done. Um, I am going to look under this uh, bed liner, which is actually the OEM Toyota bed liner. You don't see that very much. And I'll see how the floor of this bed is, I may cut out the floor of the bed and actually save it and reuse it to rebuild the bed on my 80. If you look real close at the body lines, you might notice there is a usual gap at the bottom. And as we get to the top, you'll see the bed is actually resting on the cab. So this frame has completely rotted away and this, basically this point right here is all that's keeping it from folding in half. I can't wait to get under there with a hammer. And this side is just as bad. That's all that's left. But it does have some 31 inch tires, which are actually nice aside from a little bit of uh, cracking there inside the treads. It's got the OEM alloy wheels still. Take a look inside. You can see it's been sitting for a while. The roof is getting kind of uh, that layer of mold on it. Um, one thing that is unusual that I don't see many of these trucks with are the little uh, wing vent mirrors. So let me know if this is a rare option. I have not seen a third gen in person with these on them. So I'm hoping my plan is to part out this truck and recoup my 500 bucks back in parts. Um, the door panels are, are decent. The interior is not bad, a little dirty, but it's the bare bones interior. There's no tack or anything like that. The radio is gone. Dash is cracked. Typical Toyota interior. But this is this was the main reason for the purchase right here. Now that 3.0 liter, I know when it does uh, eventually go. Did you guys hear that? Rust just fell off the truck when I shut the door. Oh, there's another piece that just fell off right there. So when this 3.0 liter does eventually go, and I, you know. I guess they all do eventually. Uh, it'll be an easy swap up to a 3.4. So you guys know me, I'm a 22RE guy. I've got 22RE's and 22R's all over the place. And I got a couple over there, 
one more back there. That's just what I'm used to. So this 3.0 V6 is a, a new venture for me and I kind of look forward to getting into it. I never owned a V6 truck, so I like trying new stuff. So let's take a look underneath here. Uh, luckily, the leaky uh, 3.0 liter has leaked enough oil to pretty much preserve the front suspension. This is better than any of the trucks I've ever had with IFS front. So I think we've got a uh, replacement A-arm uh, maybe on one of these sides because this one is a lot nicer than that one over there. But uh, for the most part, I mean, other than being sort of crusty, the frame is not that bad. I'd love to check it out if I only had a uh, hammer. Oh, there's a, look at that. All right, let's go under here and see how she holds up to the hammer test. Solid. Moving on back here, here's a better look at the rockers. Uh, what's left of them, actually. Yep, that's Ohio for you. And there's part of the frame causing the bed to contact the cab. So, I don't even need to hit this very hard. Oh, oh yeah, there, there it is. It's not good, folks. Let's see how it is up here, around the uh, torsion bar mounts and the cross member. It's soft. It's definitely denting in, but it's not going through yet. Oh, there we go. Right, right there. So from about mid doors back, this frame is junk. Right where the leaf spring mounts, right here, is often a bad area. Whoa, there's a big chunk. Look at all this. And sadly, folks, that's not even the worst of it. Look farther back as we go up over around the gas tank, and there is really not much frame left. Uh, the frame is gone right there. There actually is no frame. There we go. So of the box frame, I've got uh, three out of four sides. Now let's take a look up under here. This is the worst part that I've seen. And look, the frame does not exist. We have one out of four sides of the box frame. Uh, there is the bottom edge right there. And you can see that's all, we have one thin sheet of rust that was the top edge of the frame right there. And that's all that's left on the side. The frame has rusted away completely almost right there. You know I gotta hit that with a hammer. Really, there's just not much left to fall off. I wouldn't trust that hitch to carry much weight. It's held in by what looks to be one rusty bolt. So this is what 500 bucks gets you. And I'm not complaining because really, we just bought it for the drivetrain. If you look at this side, which has the large section of frame rusted away, you can tell 
uh, something's going on with either the suspension or something because it's the whole axle is moved about maybe an inch or two farther back on this side than it is on the other side. It's still somewhat centered over here. Uh, the bed is also shifted up on this side. There's a larger gap at the bottom and it's not quite touching at the top. I bet if it was being driven on the road it would probably flex enough to hit because you can see it's rubbing off uh, right there. There's some paint missing. Going under the driver's side which is just as bad as far as the rockers go. Looking at the frame, you can see we've got a uh, very crusty mount here and this frame has split. Here is the bottom of the boxed frame right here. It's just hanging off doing its own thing and then the inside is somewhat rather away but uh, so you've got about half of the frame left there, two out of four sides. But this is missing all the way up here and you got the leaf spring mount here that's really not held in by much and then it continues all the way up there with the rot. I see the guy already cut the cat off can't blame him. At one time this was connected so that's it for today but what do you think? 500 bucks for a engine trans and transfer case and I got a pile of rust with it for free and a few good spare parts. Thanks for watching guys.